G'day guys, what's cracking? It's Ralph here and today I want to talk to you about Yongnyu's latest offering of 35mm prime lens with the Nikon Z mount built for the Nikon Z cameras. This is on a Z5 at the moment. I just thought I'd put it on so you can see what it looks like. Some of the specs, well, this is the YN 35mm F2Z DF DSM for Nikon Z mount full frame with auto focus. Come on. So that's what we're talking about. Let me give you a bit of a run through about the externals of the lens before we get into the internals and what it can actually achieve. On the outside, it's quite simple. You have a focus ring that helps you focus on your subject. Yes, okay. Uh, get with it, Ralph. You have this cool little button around here that turns it from autofocus to manual focus, and so you can select which one you like. And then this locks the focus. So if you have your focus box on something and you want to make sure it stays there, you just hold this down as you're operating the camera and you're able to take a shot. Let's take off the lens cap. It's a nice little lens cap, and you'll see straight away it's a 52 millimeter thread, and that is from this side to that side, and the F2, which means it's aperture is of two and we'll show you how good that aperture is shortly look at that as I alter the aperture of the camera you can see exactly the aperture ring and how much it opens the flip side of the camera has a metal casing here the lens is metal it feels like it's well made it's quite simple to use and you have your connectors here make sure the autofocus functions on the lens work appropriately now, I found the autofocus on this to be really quite quick and also very quiet I'll hold it up to the microphone and I'll focus on something for you and you could just um, tell for yourself. See? Let's go close. It's, 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 a, it's almost a hummer. I don't think I can hear. I can just feel it as the motor operates in here. So it's very, very quiet. Now it has this cool little USB here, which is for firmware updates. And it is hidden away. And you do need to get the knife into here and just flick it up really gently so as not to damage it, but so as to remove it. But otherwise, it's just it's like a spy USB-C. You just can't find it. It's just hidden away there like, <laughs> come get me, come get me. It's only 290 grams or this weight, if that weight makes any sense to you, which I'm sure it does to like 90% of my audience. So it's, it's pretty, pretty lightweight. You'd expect that from a 35 mil prime, to be honest. So it has a dust proof and waterproof rubber ring. It is not waterproof. Don't go chuck it in a puddle thinking about doing something creative. No, but if there's a bit of rain sprinkling, it won't get in between the lens and the camera, which is really, really important. Gives you a nice snug fit that is airtight so you don't get any dust blowing in and mucking up your sensor either. Now the lens is $264.58. Yes, that's right. That's US. Um, and you can work out what it is in your part of the world. There'll be links in the description below, but it's half the price of its Nikon counterpart. Now, the Nikon lens is a 35mm, but it's an f1.8. This is only an f2, but it's still pretty low. So you need to balance that up. And also whether a cheap ER lens impacts image quality. So I've taken this lens out for a little bit of a shoot on the Nikon Z5 because I think it's a really good um, pairing with the Z5 as opposed to some of the more expensive cameras. If you buy a more expensive camera you'd probably invest in a more expensive prime lens. But, but what sort of quality do you get? Well I took it out, I took a bit of street photography at night and then I went and shot some of my kids some action shots as they're mucking about with the water and here are those shots and what you need to recognize is with a camera your camera supplies the shots per second and the lens does all the heavy lifting really. So uh, lens quality is what matters. Have a look at the bokeh on these, have a look at how it's caught some of those images. And if you can see yourself using that, I think for a 35 mil prime, and 35 mil is kind of all the old cameras, they're all 35 mil because it was the closest to what your eye sees in terms of its perspective and everything. So I think a 35 mil is great for portraits, it's great for family shoots, it's great to have on your camera to walk around with. Um, and it's also great for street photography. There's probably a variety of other uses, but it's kind of handy to have in the bag. And at this size and weight, you can do that without having to compromise losing a lot of space or adding a lot of weight to your camera gear. All right, let's have a look at distortion in the lens. So I'm going to zoom into the middle and I'm going to line the side up with the side of the screen so you can um, see if there's any bulge or movement. This is an F2. Now let's go through. We've got F2.8, F4 f5.6, f8, f11, f14, f16. And if we just come out just, just a portion and just see, I'm going to go back through them. 
and see if there's any bulge or movement in the lens it just looks like there's li very little distortion whatsoever very happy with that the same is true of the corners it holds the straight lines straight now let's look at whether there's noise in the shot and whether there's sharpness in the corners so we started shooting let's let's jump to f2 and let's zoom in the focus point was right in the middle and as you can see that's fairly sharp you get right in there it's starts to pixelate and it's not really sharp at about this magnification that's that's quite sharp could be sharper but isn't yeah good one Ralph let's zoom out to the corners and what we're going to do is see if the sharpness deteriorates as we move through so that sharpness at f2 is pretty good let's go to 2.8 that's not I've seen far far worse so it doesn't feel like it's distorting. It doesn't feel like it's extra non-sharp or messy. It doesn't look like it's noisy. It's holding all those things. As we continue through the f-stops, you'll see in the right-hand corner, it's a maximum aperture of 16 and the lowest aperture of 2. And there's seven blades that create that aperture and therefore the shape of the bokeh. You can see how windy it was on the day, but it still, it looks pretty like, here's my conclusion. The center is maybe an eight out of 10 for sharpness, but so are the edges. And it's a cheaper lens. And well, you'll see how sharp it is when it gets to human eyes later on. It's not meant for landscape, but that gives you a bit of a, a feel. Let's have a look at vignetting. So this is on F2 two and you can see it's quite significant vignetting all the way around there's light in the middle and if i just take a manual approach to vignetting to decrease it yeah there's still a fair bit and it's still quite wide see how wide it is all right let's move through these now so that's 2.8 it's still there starts to fade at four 5.6 it's hard to see and straight up 8 11 14 and 16 you don't really have a problem with vignetting although on 16 you start to see the light distortion from the sun which is way 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 over here just some of the rays coming through so then i got the kids out and i started shooting them as you would have seen before and have a look like that's pretty sharp look at look at zari's eye so in terms of sharpness, once it focuses in and when you're shooting people, it just comes up just, just great. You can see all my metadata in the top right about how fast that was. That was one over 400th of a second. Um, and yeah, it's that, that was a lot going on in that shot and this autofocus struggled to find anything, but that's as much on the camera as it is on the lens. Um, there's the detail. That's pretty good. Um, let me just go to Zari's eye. That zoomed in at 200%. We go in at 100%. I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, I think you would be happy. Not with that. That's blurry as. I don't know what that's focused on. His aim. Now this is showing off the minimum focusing distance, which I reckon is close to a closer to 20 centimeters. They say it's 35. I reckon you get closer to 20 centimeters. And this shot kind of proves that I really like this shot. It just um, holds a lot of a lot of things that you want from a portrait. And have a look at the bokeh. This is kind of the bokeh that you might expect, or bouquet as some say, which is ridiculous. Sorry if you're upset, yeah, but it's just ridiculous. It's not bokeh. It's not a bokeh of flowers. It's bokeh. What am I talking about? Oh, right up his nose. That's not good, is it? But you can see the difference between dark and light. And we'll get to that in just a minute. I really like this shot. It could nail the focus through all the crazy stuff. But it has that nice, like, sun. Now, I haven't edited any of these. But if I edit it now, you can just put a nice little bit of a glow. It just has that two buttons. That's not how I'd normally edit. But it comes up pretty nice, doesn't it? And then we've got Zari here. Um, and that's that's her eye. That's how sharp it's getting. You can see each of those eyelashes. Uh, I think it's really good. You can take all sorts of photos with the lens. Obviously, 35 mil it pushes you down into a more creative space, which I really like, um, including mud on her face, which she'll shoot me for if she ever watches this video. That's why she's banned from YouTube. 
partly. This is F2, but watch this. So F5, you start to get a starburst or a sunburst, and this is F7.1, and then we go up to 13. And depending on where you move your hand, it depends on what sort of sunburst you get, but that's F13, F13, F13. But what I love about this, look at this, super, super bright, but the dark shadow, so this should be all really dark, but you can still pick up the light. Now, that is pretty noisy. That is quite a noisy finish. If we go to where we started, if I go zoom in here, that's not so noisy at all. And the ISO was 140. This ISO is 1000. And as such, it looks a bit noisy. But you can see detail, and I haven't edited it, detail in the shadows. So if I bring up the shadows, look at this. Do I do a auto on this? See, that's great. Look, look at the dynamic range that this lens can capture. Aided by the camera, which is a Z5, which isn't a high capacity shoot in the dark camera. Now, as we wrap things up, I just want to show you some of the specifics of the lens from Yong Nuo. It is a Z mount with a field of view of 61.3 degrees, which is a 35 mil for a full frame camera. Its minimum aperture is f16 and its maximum is two. It has nine elements in eight groups and there is the other data that we've probably already covered in this video. So I'd love to know what you think about this lens from what you've seen from the review put downstairs. Do you think, um, do you think you'd buy it? Do you think you'd need it? How would you particularly use it what insights do you have for the community after watching this video of things I've missed or hopefully not things I've got wrong but you know there is always that allowance if you're part of this channel you know there's always a tiny allowance for just not being smart enough if you enjoyed this video please give it a like please um, ring the bell and subscribe you can even consider joining or you can even shout me a coffee it's always really welcome I'm always really chuffed when that happens thanks so much for watching thanks Yong Nuo for sending me this lens um, uh, it's really been exciting to sort of delve into the world of lens reviews so I'm really thankful for that and otherwise I will see you in the next video bye F2Z DF DSM for Nikon on the Z mount made by Yong Nio. Oh, wow, okay.